this has always been a conversation and sometimes a monologue and now a dialogue between the Titans fans and Titans writers. And I feel like this, hopefully in my mind, it is the, um, the best version of that. We really feel like we're, we, we love the characters as much as the fans do and really want to set them in a great place where they win as a team and, 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 and develop as individuals. First of all, I, I, I will just want to expect that I, uh, I don't know how many times I rewatched the screen for for, the, for this part two, but I at some point I may break the HBO Max screener side because wow, you guys really did not hold back whatsoever. Um, uh, how much uh, fun was it? Like even though you knew that this could possibly be the final season, how much was it? Like okay, guys, let's just bring out the bucket 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 list. Just let's go with everything we can. Exactly, we had to do it because. I, like I said before, I, we've, I've been on shows before where we didn't do it and I really regretted it. So I was saying, let's ride ourselves into a corner, finish it up. Um, if there's a miracle and we get a season five, great. We'll uh, do some gymnastics to find our way back into it. But let's, let's really try to come up with the most satisfying journey for these characters that really gets in the space where we want them to be. Was um, I mean I guess like I guess it's better asked just now than than later. But like, were, when you guys found out that this was this was going to be, it, were there any attempts to find another home for the show, or was it kind of like this is kind of the cards we we've been dealt with? You know, I don't even know that actually. I mean, we we definitely aggressively wrote this season to be a finale, um, and because we wanted to for the characters, and also we felt like the character. This is where the show wanted to go at this point you know like we we feel like if we do anything less we'd be treading water again i think there's a season five in the show for sure but what we were really driving always was to kind of really give a real full fan experience the, for the people who really love titans and the people who just tuning in to kind of watch them go on a journey let's talk about these first, like this kind of like two hour mid-season premiere because i uh, i noticed that it said directed by greg walker and i was like wait a minute i didn't know this was happening so uh was had you guys had you tried to direct earlier in the series or was it always planned for like, you know, let's see if this season works or no, this doesn't work. Let's do next season. Or how did this come about? It came about because I, I mean, if showrunners direct early on, it's, it's really difficult to do both jobs. Um, and so you really put the show in jeopardy when you do that. Um, and unless the show's on really, you know, you really know what you're doing. We were, there's a lot of figuring out of Titans and a lot, it's a giant show. <laughs> um, you know, it was massive, big cast and costumes and fights and visual effects and locations and expense. So it wasn't something that I could kind of take my eye off the ball, excuse me, until season four, where we had such a great team built around me that I could kind of take a little bit of time off and, and um, from post and writing and producing, I knew that the, the people around me would support me to do it. Um, and so I could, I could try to do both. It was not easy, um, but we got there. Um, so that, and originally it was always designed that I would do in the back half. So we had more scripts down, done, more scripts written. So I could go away when the scripts, most of the scripts were written. We still had a, a lot of work to do on the last two episodes, um, partly when I was directing and then when I was finished directing, but the team was great in supporting me. So I was able to take that time off. It was a long time. I was gone all summer. Because again, you talk, you know, talk about the fact that you have to, play, you have to play two roles when you're doing these episodes because you can't really necessarily turn off the showrunner brain. You have to both, you know, you have to put on two hats basically. So, how did like, how, can you talk about balancing that act of like you're on set, you're doing these things? I'm like, I really want to do this as a director, but I know as a showrunner, there's no way we can do this. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, how you talk about that? That's a really good question. Yeah, I mean, look, the, what the advantage is is that I don't have to ask anybody, right? I don't have to say like, do you think we can do this? You know, I just do it. Um, so there's that, and I think the crew liked that because there wasn't a call back to LA going, uh, we're gonna change this. Is it okay? <laughs> you know, I could do that on the fly, and it made things happen. The same way that when Akiva directed. Goldsman on the show. It was just a lot more decision making. Decision making happens faster. Um, I think there were times where I was going as a showrunner. Do I think this is the smart choice? You know, I had to kind of do. Or as a director, I really, really want to get this done. But I didn't get to go in extra hours longer, or you know, I didn't get any kind of perks. The show has still has to be run the way that the shows run. So there were times where I had 
um, I thought, well, maybe I can throw my weight around and like, no, and actually this is the rule and you have to be done by this time and you don't get any extra time. So it created, created madness at times to try to get, those, those are very ambitious episodes um, and, and in a tight schedule on location. As you know, the second one, since you've seen it, is almost entirely on location. So there was just living in motels and running around and trying to deal <laughs> with weather and COVID and um, it was it was nuts to get it done because it was like shooting an indie movie out in rural Ontario doesn't didn't feel like a typical Titans episode, which I'm glad I got stuck with that one because I would have felt guilty if I gave anybody else that episode because it was so hard. Last time we talked, you know, I was trying to drill you a little bit on getting some Dick Curry out of you. And boy, does episode eight not disappoint it, it, because what I find so fascinating is that in the midst of all this insanity, you guys still find a way to give the Dickory fans some great development on this romance. But like in the weird, in the like craziest circumstances of like, hey, let's just see what their domestic life would look like while they're stuck with this cold. Yeah. So can you talk about can you guys talk about can you talk about how you guys came to that idea? Like how like what has comedy looked like in writers room over the years of, you know, what would their domestic life look like? while they're dealing with a new big bad. You know, I wish I remembered, because, you know, of course, the, a lot of that was generating while we were doing the season and before I was going off to direct exactly what that, and that wasn't, you know, I didn't plan to direct. It was because we had multiple directors fall out. And then I was like, well, I don't, there's, you know, I, 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 it's too close to shooting to explain to somebody else and get somebody going. So I should be the person. So I threw myself into those episodes in that block um, of two episodes because we had, um, we had just a couple of directors fall out, two directors fall out on a slot, COVID and travel and family stuff. So I ended up being the um, sucker who took that. And uh, and in terms of the Dick Corey story, it really was more of a sense of, even though there's a lot of fun of watching them in domestics and watching them, once we saw that, it was like, oh, we can have them in bed together and then we can have them dressed as different people in the kind of like <laughs> Tennessee country club environment. And they really jumped, the costumes did a great job and, the, and both the actors, Brenton and Anna, jumped at the occasion, I think really did an amazing job. Um, but originally was what happens when you lose your soul, you know, in the kind of an invasion of the body snatchers way. What happens when you become a zombie and you can't connect to the person who you love, will you ever get them back? And is it too late? Um, and what's that feeling of a potential marriage or love that you could have that gets, you know, becomes impossible by circumstance? And we really thought that was, a, we really responded to the kind of a power of that emotion and that emotional story. And that's how we started. And then we got to have fun, you know, with cars and them goofing around and they really, they really lit up with it. I got to talk about the moment of because I, you know, because this just shows how much you guys have developed Dick from an emotional standpoint. Where you know we we hear his we hear his tape, and we hear how he actually feels about her. Uh, what did what what made this the right storyline for him to finally, in in his own Dick Grayson way, rather than just right. telling her in front of her, she do do it over cassette. What made this the right way to do it? Because it's it's it, I love the callback to season one because it's like you always we always we always knew that. Come on, yeah. it's always been glory. Yeah, and I, I think that he knew that too, but he didn't, you know, one of the things, and this is a tricky thing with fans like you, Andy, which was just like, we know where they're going, but we got to we got to get there for the both the actors and the characters feel like we've earned it. They were never going to go out and have like a round of shots, jello shots, and then end up in bed together. You know, in fact, they did end up in bed, but that wasn't right. So it kind of mirrored where we needed to go with them, where they needed to get to the point where, and for Dick, it was almost too late, where he lost Corey, where he really was forced to realize his feelings for her. He's so blocked, you know, that character, and so much about taking care of others, but not really having that level of emotional intimacy, because he was not raised to have that. It was actually seen as a liability. So for him to get there, it took this long. I don't know who, who had more fun. Joshua acting out these Connor Luther scenes, or you guys getting to write all of this. Where, at what point do you guys have to balance of, okay, we need to really show that this, this boy has changed, but at the same time, we don't want to lose what makes him so likable. So like, what, what were the rules for you guys, like in your like Superboy Bible, so to speak? It's a really smart point. And, and, we had to go through his journey too. And to me, it wasn't enough that he had a haircut and wore cologne and you know had a leather jacket. <laughs> well, to me, and for all of us, not just me, you know, the writers together, we decided he had to go on a journey where he really went too far as Lex in order to see that that's not him. 
I think we all have to do that when you're trying on a persona because it's not, I mean, he was trying it out. He has it in him, but he didn't, he went too far and we went too far. We shot scenes that we can't ever show where, where he went too far as, uh, in terms of the, where I was uncomfortable taking Superboy to that character because I didn't, at that point, because I didn't think that was who he was. And I think fans would not have liked it. So we self-censored, but we had like like him, like his character, we, the writers had to go too far in order to see what was the limit for him to see in himself, this is not me, I need to go back to Titans. Well, because this was in, we've seen this in trailers, I guess it's safe for me to ask this, but you know, we know Jason Todd is back and he seemingly plays a, a really intriguing role in Tim's final step to become the third Rob. You guys went through the robbers on this show. <laughs> so well, why was it so important for you guys as a storyteller to make sure that he also had a part to play in Tim's arc this season? I think it's dofold. One, it, it is important to see that Jason Todd, through his experience with Robin and then Red Hood, has evolved as a character. He's no longer just the wise crack and kick ass hyper violent guy. He's actually someone who can kind of understand what it means to be Robin and both the responsibility of it and the kind of core essence of the character and where he succeeded and where he failed. So it was important for him to see that the kind of wiser side of Jason. And I think Tim needed to see it too. And I think Dick wanted, Dick really, who was the architect of this, wanted Tim to experience Jason Todd as a mentor to kind of bring what he knew to it and, and the way that he could show him what, what works for him and how he could ultimately incorporate all that and be his own Robin. Was there any other fan favorites you guys were trying to get back but couldn't for logistical reasons? I mean, I would have had them all. I mean, it was tricky to get... Um, Hawk and Dove back together. I mean, because of how Hawk's, you know, you know, kind of him being you know, dead. <laughs> well, there's, but you know, dead on our show is relative. As oh, that's know. true. We, that's we, true. We we play fast and loose with dead. So I felt like we earned. We're so we're so loose with it that we could have brought anybody back. But at that point, the character stories were so focused um, and really streamlined towards an ending. I don't think we would have been able to do service to the amazing actors. You bring a Minka Kelly or Connor Lewis, Leslie or Alan Richton back, you want to really give them something to really play. And we were so dead set on this ending and, and, and steaming ahead that it would have been hard to really do justice to those characters. Though I would have had them, you know, I would have loved, I would have done backflips if we could have get them. Well, I know you and I will likely definitely talk uh, for the series for now, but for our screen run readers, what can you tease them for these final episodes that, you know, because I I'm I'm an embargo, so I can't say anything, but you're the mm -hmm. show, so you can tease more than I can. So what can you tease our readers about these final six episodes as they go up against the bloodiest villain I've ever seen? Like I Joseph Morgan fans thought they saw a lot of blood on vampire diaries. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, he he never didn't really necessarily, you know, make a career of swimming in it with like we've uh, <laughs> put him in there. And he was such a gamer to do all that. You know, I think that. This has always been a conversation and sometimes a monologue and now a dialogue between the Titans fans and Titans writers. And I feel like this, hopefully, in my mind, it is the um, the best version of that. We really feel like we're, we we love the characters as much as the fans do and really want to set them in a great place where they win as a team and, 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 and develop as individuals. My final question before I let you go, and um, because now you know this, it's, some time has passed since we learned about Titans coming to an end. You know, have you had? Are you? Would you be interested in continuing working on more DC properties? Because you know, DC Studios, James Gunn, Peter Sam, they're doing the new DC universe. Have you had any talks with them since uh, the news of Titans coming to an end? Are you hoping to have some conversations with them? And is there a DC property you would like to take on next? Well, I'd work with any of these actors again. If there's any version of Titans, I would definitely do it again. And and if there's ever a chance that someone comes calling, it's so fresh, you know, it's so new, Andy. You know, we're we're we're. I I, I think I'm between myself and publicity, the last people working on this show. Kind of like, you know, we're 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 you know the the in the like abandoned fort at the top of the <laughs> hill. But uh, you know, if somebody comes knocking on the gate, I'll open it up and bring them in, and love to lo love to have a chance at it again. It's I'm so grateful for everything that we were able to do on the show and that I, how I was able to grow as well. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I, you know, if, just to give my two, two cents, I love this season. You guys, did, I mean, you know, it leaves me wanting more, uh, but, you know, you guys really, you went for it. So, like, congrats on what looks to be an amazing, strong season. I can't wait for fans to see it. I will, I will, I will thank grill you. you with questions for the series now because, you know, we got things to talk about. All uh, right, Andy, I'm ready.
I'm ready. So awesome. great to see you. Thank you. I love you. I follow you on Twitter and I love to see what you say about the show. And yeah, yeah, um, yeah. My, uh, my hand, I will, if you, I will hit you up so you can, uh, you know, yeah, so you can, my handle is literally just my name. So yeah, no, I, I see your name all the time and kind of watch you and, uh, and, and <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm annoying. I'm very annoying. No, no, I love your, I love the passion and I love all the support. So thank you so much. And let's talk again when the finale comes around. Absolutely. Greg, thank you so much for your time today and uh, we will see you soon. All right. Take care, Andy. Be well. Take it. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.